Hello again, good nurse of all persuasions. Now let's, um, yeah, let's play some more Monolith, I guess. With this fusion generator, the room can maintain its own energy circuit. A security system, in case any human or other biological life form has an emergency in the drilling shaft. Well, we've already got our emergency. Court, is it really safe? Of course, it is a small version of a standard fusion generator, roughly the size of an average washing machine. Okay, then let's put this fusion in spin cycle. I think you may be hearing my uh, washing yes. machine actually. Let me just um, <laughs> go and close the door. Hey! That thing also entered its spin cycle seat. Good boy. Brainless machines. <laughs> it's still working. I never thought I'd be happy to hear the ear splitting noise made by a machine like this. Uh, what ear splitting noise? Hmm. Well, anyway, let's do a scan just for the fun of it. This room is the drilling station. The machine on the ceiling can utilize multiple attachments. It is currently equipped with a magnet beam which loosens parts from underground and transfers magnetic metals to the surface. Workers can climb down the sides to manually retrieve non-magnetic sediment from the ground or to carry out repairs. It looks like this room has a self-contained power supply system. Would you like me to fly into this dark, obvious, menacing, apparently bottomless hole? Please do. Well, yes. And he actually does. <laughs> or it, I guess. There is a lot of metallic debris on the ground, but nothing else of note. Okay. Well, let's go over to the console and uh, do a thing or two. Such as... moving this thing around and we do that by placing these uh, well grips I guess outside of the uh, center so basically what we want to do is okay well that angle is good enough uh, let's just Put it like so, so it's pointing straight down. Oh, not quite. There we go. And do we get the thing? Yeah, we kind of do. There were some magnetic metal parts in the hole. Now, actually, there is a puzzle later on, so I want to do this a few more times, actually. Uh, just so I can get enough of that metallic stuff. Looks like there's nothing magnetic left in the hole. Oh. Well, that's unfortunate. Uh, is there something over here, though? Looks like there's nothing magnetic left in the hole. Oh. Well, pants. Um, 
Right, let's just use this stuff to break down the door. How do you do it? How if do we do it that, the you ask? The struts, it might stay. Yeah, looks good. Well, we welded to the door, of course. Did I? No, I didn't do the thing. <laughs> Oops. If this does not work, we will not be able to remove it again. Are you sure this is a good idea? It's going to work. Trust me, Cor. Yeah. You would be right in uh being a little bit questioning. The welder is out of gas and nothing more than dead weight now. that thing at the door shall we the one that we just oh uh, I just forgot how we do the thing uh, well that we just affix a whole bunch of magnetic stuff to okay we're gonna same place uh, Close enough. Cor, do you have any final objections, hints, or prayers you want to share? No. My calculations indicate a relatively high chance of success. I will not disclose the exact number so as not to worry you. If this fails, however, it could ruin the entire mechanism and jam it forever. And you think that would not worry me? Okay. Unpleasant, but unavoidable. Let's go. <laughs> Real beauty. The high probability was correct. Statistics don't lie. Neither do physics. Right, moving swiftly on. Let's just have a look at this stuff too while we're here. These are our samples that were mined here. There are crystals inside one of them. These stone and metal samples are so heavy. I can't move them an inch. They're also rock hard and solid. I can't break anything off. There's a strange attachment lying around here. I'll take it with me. As you do. So what are we going to be using it with? Yeah, that is going to be a very big question. A pretty crystal. Take it with you. Mm, no, no chance. It's stuck in the rock or ore. Oh well, that's just too bad. Yes, away inside. Finally. What is that? Mark? Hey! Stop! Where did he go? I am not registering any signs of life. I, I saw something, a, a shadow, the silhouette of a human. He ran away. I assume my sensors are somewhat more precise than your eyes. 
So you're saying I'm imagining things? <sighs> well, the situation is getting to me, so I guess I can't rule it out. Stay positive, Tessa. We did it. We did it. We're in. We're in. That's something, at least. There's nothing going on here in the station. Where did the signal come from, Cor? From this direction. Enhancing location. There is a light source up in the command center. You're right. Let's go. Maybe I was right after all. Okay. We have signs of... some form of activity. No light, no person, not even energy by the looks of it. Damn it! Your heart rate is too high, Tessa. Keep my heart rate out of it. I'm allowed to get upset about all this crap. What is this all about? We both saw the light core. It was up here, no doubt. And now I'm here, and there's nothing, no power, no source of light, nothing. What the hell is going on here? And and the signal, what could have been sending it, Cor? This is definitely the source, but I cannot find any electricity in the vicinity, just the generator we started. What was it then? Eleven hedgehogs and a hamster wheel? An average-sized toucan with a megaphone? Both of these theories are probably incorrect. <sighs> Sorry for getting so riled up, Cor. I mean, it's not your fault. So you've lost the signal and there's no power here. Nor are there any signs of life from anyone. Or anything. Are you able to tell us more about the outpost now? Yes, this is an independent drilling and research station. Judging by the condition of its building materials, it was probably built 20 to 40 Earth years ago. I could find all details in the database. But I have a theory now what kind of planet we are on and where it might be located. Well, let's hear it. Visualization initialized. I have the slightly disconcerting suspicion that the station is not close to any inhabited planets. These are almost always incorporated into designated trade routes. They have an alternating crew of more than 400 people, as this allows for the transportation of large amounts of necessary goods. The station we currently find ourselves in, however, is autonomous and small, and its regular crew could not have encompassed more than 40 people. I assume that it was part of a research program which erected stations such as this one at the edge of the known parts of the galaxy. Ships are sent to these stations in regular intervals of more than a year, as long as they are in service. In the meantime, the stations function autonomously. At some point, they are abandoned, once the borders of explored territory shift. But there must have been some kind of communications channel for emergencies. Indeed, but direct interstellar communication is too slow. It could take months for a signal to reach another planet. These stations help themselves, they have no choice. However, IMC ships regularly fly through these areas to pick up any signals. If necessary, they can help or relay information to headquarters. There might also be trading or exploration ships from other companies that could receive signals from here, long before they reach any inhabited planets. So that means, if we transmit a distress signal, it's more like a smoke signal on a lost island at sea. Not like calling emergency services via landline that will be there tomorrow. Correct. So, reaching someone will take time, but it's not impossible. As soon as the station has enough power, it will keep us alive and can continuously emit signals to the transport routes so someone can pick us up. Correct. Then let's do it. Good. The power supply comes from an incineration plant in the station's west wing. We received a signal from here, so the communication systems seem to be intact. It's nice how both of us are just ignoring the fact that the signal shouldn't have existed, just like the light. But, okay, we should just be glad that we noticed it and we're here now. Now we just need power. Hmm. Actual logic in my adventure game. What is going on?
Mm. Yeah. This thing, uh, I realized we haven't really uh, seen any information related to what I'm hinting at. So I'll just keep mum on it until we do. I believe it is in this general area that uh, we will, well, find some notes and uh, maybe even another um, ID card. Um, yeah, this is rather interesting though. And I also found that there is a uh, an achievement or trophy, call it whatever you want, uh, in this game. Um, that should trigger somewhere around here. Insi insinuating that there should be... Um, well, if not one other key card, then at least another entity here to interact with. I do remember that there was a locked door over in the quarters. Uh, but yeah, let's just cross that bridge when we get there. But that will probably not come to play in this episode. Mm. Anyway, let's get out of here. Look at that, a handy wrench in the wall. And um, it's kind of kind of a good idea to familiarize yourself with uh, what is actually if I calculated the here. procedures and automatic systems correctly, then there are various specific manual steps executed by humans necessary to achieve this outcome. Usually, the security system would open this door. There must have been an emergency lockdown while someone was holding this bar in place, analogous to the locked door by the drilling room. Oh, compared to the control room, this place is full of random assortments of outdated technology. Apart like from 3D printers. Alarm, nothing really belongs here, I think. In self-sustaining facilities, it is not unusual to adjust the equipment according to the given conditions, as long as the people in charge know what they are doing, or they have a core. I can imagine. A workbench, full of trash and signs of wear and tear. That's what every DIY enthusiast dreams of. The only thing left inside here are cable, kind of nozzle and a lot of screws. Uh, how many more screws can I get? A workbench. And of course. Hmm. There are some elements and materials written down here. Um, yeah, so Keen Adventure Gamers will um, have their gamer senses uh, just blaring on all cylinders right now. And yes, these are uh, notes that we will need at some point, but um, not right now. Note that they exist and that they exist here. Gas burner with two tubes, both of which aren't connected to. Anything. Okay, well, we need to find something to connect them to. This console won't help us without power. A coffee machine. What a surprise. It is also improperly localized. Maybe they just, uh, yeah, missed this. <laughs> All things considered, given that this is not exactly the biggest studio in the world, I'll give them a pass. But still kinda... You still kinda need to point that out though. 
court, that looks like a 3D printer. Correct. This machine can turn virtual models into reality by applying liquid synthetic materials and metals layer by layer and then hardening them. How do you know that? I remember I did some research into this topic. My long-term memory seems to be working at least. But it needs power. And then there are the robot can be moved using these wheels, but only down here, even though it should be able to stretch upwards. That is probably only for maintenance purposes, and to be able to get it out of the way if it cannot move on its own anymore. Let's wait. I don't think it'll be useful to me anywhere, so I'll just move it back. Yeah. It's gonna get to a puzzle, but we'll, um, you know, as they say, cross that bridge when we get there. Now, over here. Hmm. Actually, I'm not sure we can get in here right now. But let's find out. Oh, old barrels. It won't move. Uh, but it's open just a crack. Looks like someone tried to keep it open with a metal plate. But it didn't work like it did with the other door there. Hmm. Screw drive it. If anything... Oh. Oh yeah. Screwdriver meet gap. It fits, but... Oh. But instead of moving the door, it just got bent. Oh. Uh, wrench and gap? Nope. Too wide. Damn it. <laughs> okay, well, we don't... Act we don't exactly need to do anything in here right now. So let's just leave it. Uh, can we go here though? Pull this back? No. Okay, well, let's just leave. Oh, look at that, it's almost time to end the episode too. Let's see, can we go here? Don't think we could, but let's check. We are also going to need power here, Tessa. Yeah, you're right, but I can't find any mechanical way of opening them either. It's all solid as rock. Hmm. Okay, I guess we'll have to fire up the incinerator before we can open those doors. No? Random crank lying around? That might be useful. Oh, of course. If you're gonna click it in a point to click adventure game, you click. Nature is reclaiming this place. The plants are growing into the station from outside. These barrels have been here for ages. I can't read what's inside them, they're too rusty. It should not be anything dangerous. Otherwise, these plants would not be growing here so abundantly. That is logical. I hope. Um, to be fair, my guy, that only means that whatever is in the barrels is not dangerous to the plants. That doesn't mean that they are, you know, that the stuff is completely safe for human, uh, you know, purposes. The drilling room is connected to the station's main power supply. Your analysis was correct. Um, but anyway, here's me injecting reality into a point of like adventure games again. Uh, let's see, what are we doing here again? Uh, we did not need to go here, so let's let's go away. Teacup while we are moving. Just 
just doing a scan. This is the door to the incinerator plant. I cannot detect any cracks or weaknesses. The door looks thicker than it is and only weighs about 400 kilograms. You should be able to operate it from the control room if there was energy. <laughs> and to get energy in the first place, we need to actually get in here. So how do we go about that? See, there's this cover plate here. I can't move it. It's held on by some screws. Oh no. What if we had a screwdriver though? A bit rusty, but it's working. Yes, that looks like a manual method. This does not conform to regular standards. There is a cog missing. Okay. The mechanism to open the door. I'm going to have to turn the cogs manually. But I'll need a tool for that. The main cog has an attachment with three spokes. And do we have anything with three or something? We actually do. The attachment fits onto the large cog wheel, but I can't move it like this. Uh-huh. A crank and thing? Everything fits together and the attachment fits onto the cog. Now I can turn it and operate the mechanism. Now all I have to do is replace the missing cog. Huh. Okay. Well... Uh... Maybe that's easy. Yes, that mm. Yeah. We need to solve a puzzle and then get back here, if I remember correctly. Let's just uh, play it safe and check. Uh, yeah. I will end the episode here and. Um, Let's reconvene in the storage room, you know, with the uh, 3D printer and a uh, burner and the uh, DIY workbench that is so uh, duly stocked and whatnot. Stay tuned.